Hello, today is Tuesday, January 24th, and welcome to the 5-Minute Check-In. Today, we're going to have two special guests to talk about new publications that have come out in the area of obesity. And I'm going to break the rules and go over time a little bit because we have two guests and two big publications. But before we get started, a quick mention of what's happening out there with the quote-unquote quadrademic. So let's take a look at some of the numbers. The ILI, the influenza-like illness numbers are trending down, which is good. There is a slight uptake in the COVID numbers and hospitalizations, about 16% uh, from this past December. I want to mention that there was a brief mention in the media that there was a signal hinting that Americans over the age of 65 may be at a slightly increased risk for ischemic stroke after receiving the Pfizer bivalent shot. However, further evaluation, that is not the case. The bivalent vaccine is perfectly safe. So we have to continue to encourage our patients to get vaccinated. Recent publication by the Commonwealth Foundation shows us why that's so important. Over the past two years, the vaccinations have prevented 18 million admissions to hospitals and over 3 million additional deaths. However, only 40% of adults over 65 and 16% those over the age of five have received the appropriate bivalent booster shot. So we really have to work on encouraging our patients to get completely vaccinated and get the appropriate booster. So let's go on and talk to our guests. So now on to my two special guests. Both are assistant professors at the Baylor College of Medicine. First, we have Dr. Stephanie Sisley, who is a pediatric endocrinologist. And then we have Dr. Leila Abushamad, who is an adult endocrinologist, both at the Baylor College of Medicine. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. So let's jump right into this. Two major publications, a change in the pediatric guidelines. We have drug names that are difficult to say, and some of the indications are a little confusing, and we have a lot of media attention. Let's take a look at the semaglutide trial first. Now, this was a drug that was previously approved for the treatment of adult obesity. Um, and the trial examines the effectiveness in adolescents with non-diabetic obesity. Can you tell us about this, Dr. Sisley? What is the context of the trial, the design of the trial, the results of the trial? It's a lot to do. Absolutely. So this study looked at 180 uh, participants who were adolescents, so age 12 to less than 18 years of age. And in a two to one randomized uh, randomization factor, they did a randomized controlled trial with treatment of semaglutide versus placebo. And at the end of the study, they treated them for 16 weeks, as well as receiving lifestyle intervention. And at the end of the study, 73% of the subjects who had treatment responded with a 5% clinically significant weight loss compared to only 18% of placebo. And probably more impressively, 53% of them actually had 15% or more weight loss. So we're going to talk a little bit about this later, but that is clinically significant reduction in weight loss. Always tough to know, was it really about a lot of weight loss? Second study, effectiveness of the medication terzipatide, which I am not going to say correctly, and this is for adults with obesity and without diabetes, currently approved for adults with obesity and diabetes. Dr. Bouchemad, what is the background? What's the clinical trial? What's the results? So terzepatide is a once weekly subcutaneous injectable. It's a peptide that's a GLP-1 and GIP agonist. And this was a phase three double-blinded randomized control trial of about 2,500 adults over 18 years old without diabetes and with a BMI over 30 or over 27 with one weight-related complication. They were followed for 72 weeks and given either terzepatide 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, 15 milligrams, or placebo. There was about a 20-week dose escalation period. And they found that those on the 15 milligram terzepidite dose had about 20.9% of their weight loss. And you can see here a dose dependent weight, weight loss response. And 36 of those participants lost more than 25% of their weight over the course of the study. So again, very impressive findings. And the findings corresponded also to improvements in blood pressure and cholesterol with very minimal side effects. These are very, so back to the question for both of you, but let me just you know, Layla said that that 25% weight loss in 50%, that, that is a significant and clinically significant result. And just emphasizing that again. 
Yes, very effective, well-tolerated therapy, and it results in weight loss that's close to that of bariatric surgery. So definitely a game changer. And Stephanie, you would say the same in this trial with the adolescents. I would. This is the first trial that we've had where actually more than half of the adolescents actually have clinically meaningful weight loss. That's amazing. And, and a quick question that comes up is what happens, and I'll give this to you, Stephanie, when we stop this medication, What what is the result of that? Both This study actually showed that they did have about an eight-week uh, frame where at the end of the study, neither group received anything, and they both groups started to gain weight. Um, and that's pretty consistent in every single uh, weight loss trial that has ever been done, that once the drug is removed, uh, the weight starts to come back. And while we're talking about the pediatric space, the guideline change, the American Association of Pediatrics, there was a quite there was a change in, in that recommendation. Can you can you give us the highlight on that real quick? Yeah. So the AAP guidelines that just came out a couple of weeks ago made a recommendation that if you have a child who has obesity and is 12 years of age or more, they should be offered pharmacotherapy in addition to lifestyle behavior, which is different than the previous recommendations, which was always, you know, try lifestyle first and maybe try it many, many times before you offer therapy. And this was kind of, if you have obesity, you should just be offering it with the, in conjunction with the lifestyle therapy. Got it. So, you know, I talk about clinical significant trials coming out, not that often and don't really change what we do, but in this space where you both are, you have two major trials actually changing clinical behavior. Um, so it, it, I just find that to be a significant moment in time in, in, in the treatment of what now, and, and Layla, I'll ask you, you know, we think we have to change our mindset that this is a chronic illness, right? Can you just help me with that as a take home message? Yes. Yeah, so just the advent of all these new medications, we really, it really stresses that obesity should be seen as a chronic illness, just like we see people with uh, high blood pressure or with diabetes, and they take medications for these, these problems, and they take medications across the course of their lifetime. So the medications make their blood pressure normal, but then they continue the medications even when normal. We should be seeing obesity in the same light. Great. Stephanie, any other last words for us before we exit in this, this topic? Yeah, I think that these trials are exciting because it gives hope to people who have been trying to help people lose weight over time. And I think the important thing is, is up to this point, we've been treating the comorbidities, right? We treat all of them with either devices or with medications to treat them, but we haven't been able to actually treat the underlying disease. And this gives us the opportunity to actually treat the underlying disease. And hopefully we'll see over time, we're actually preventing the comorbidities from happening. Great. I'll leave that as the last comment. And thank you both for joining us today. Thanks, thank you. So thanks again for joining me in this five minute update on a very important subject of obesity. As a matter of fact, in these upcoming grand rounds in February, we're going to have both of our guests back for a more in-depth discussion on this very important topic. See you in two weeks at the next five minute check-in.